was just saying to Chris, bit of a funny start to this video. This is actually the second intro to this car because you would, would have already seen the Copart walk around. So we went down to pick this up. Chris had a little bit of a chat with him in the office and we managed to get that walk around video. So it completely took the eye off of the video in hand. So welcome back to the channel and the first video on the little 2012 Titanium KA. And as you can see, guys, it has had one. <laughs> it has had a bit of a wallet there in the back. It's bent the axle. It's quite a lot of work. We're just about to start a bit of a task of trying to get it off the back of the truck because that wheel is actually touching in there. So it's going to be quite difficult to actually get it off the truck. Moving it forward is not going to be a problem because it's nice and wet, but this may prove a little bit testing. Why we are standing here as well, I want to do a little pick up on straps. Everyone always says you've only got three straps, naughty naughty. The law on the recovery straps is three straps and a winch or four straps. So we've got a strap on it there. As you can see, impossible to get a strap around it. But we have got the, sorry, I had to cut there again and shut the door because the barn finds in there and this is going out first. So we got the winch on it there in the corner. Chris has just took that strap off and we got another strap on it there. I think it's going to be quite difficult to get it off. We got that wheel's obviously going to want to go straight and then that wheel is going to want to come straight off that way. But Chris is hoping that that doesn't turn. But because it's flat, I think that is actually going to turn because now it's got that hole in it. Obviously, it was up with the impact. There's a bit of room in there now, so that probably is going to turn. But I've seen so many of these, same as the Fiat 500 back axle, they bend so easy. So, and of course, here's the actual impact here somewhere. We'll get more into that later, but for now, let's try and get it off the back of the truck. Done like a pro there, guys. See that? Wheel trim underneath it. I didn't have any with me when I was doing the Peugeot, but st stuck a wheel trim under it, dragged it all the way to the ramp. Chris pulled forward. I stuck the wheel trim back on the ramp and he managed to wheel it straight out. So, is it going to drive forward, do you think, Chris? Yeah. It will? Yeah, it ramps in the Let's put them away and we'll see if that drags one sec. Yeah, go on, mate. Yeah, that's all right. I actually never get a look in on these salvage cars, guys. No joke. Every time one comes into the yard, as fast as we unload it and I'm putting the truck away, Chris has been under the seats, oh, in the seats, it. in the glove box. Any money? No. Oh. Pack of flying cars. Pack it. He does normally find some money. It's actually really clean. We know that this is, it's not an expensive car, not an expensive by any means. We do like to buy cheap little cars like this. And this, believe it or not, is actually a really nice spec car. So it's a titanium. So it's got those lovely alley wheels on it spoiler on it i don't know it may have some more color coded stuff around it 2012 little exhaust tip there and it's got quite a few little bits inside it so cd climate control usb electric windows broken seat yeah yeah <laughs> it has got all the little bits on it and this is going to be it's going to be a reasonably priced car chris isn't it to be fair what was the mileage 61 fire it up for us again little fiat 500 engine exactly the same sweet as a nut a lot of you probably already know this these are ultimately a fiat 500 they're exactly the same car it's just a panel work they're just they look different 
but all the chassis, everything's the same on them. Front panel slightly different due to the bumpers, etc. But you can see all the bolts are the same, same engine, same everything is the same on it. Sounds lovely. Heated front screen and rear. I know that looks quite naughty, but believe it or not, as soon as we put an axle on that, it'll just look 10 times better. And we have got our fingers crossed that that is the only damage on this alley wheel because that is very, very repairable. Hopefully, there's nothing wrong with the back of it. Oh, let's have a little feel. Yeah, there's a little bit, of, little bit of scratch in there where it's scraped, but I actually do think that that wheel's gonna have saved it. Let's get it in the workshop, mate. I get yep. that. I think first things first, we get that beam swapped out, yeah. eh? Yeah, it's movable. So it's, yeah, movable, in and out. Let's Guys, do I'm it. not going to lie, this is getting harder and harder. I can't wait till the video goes out on the barn find because this is actually the second time I've recorded this bit and outside yesterday I had to record it twice. Just kept messing up and catching the car in the background. So we've got the car in the workshop and got it up on the ramp. Chris has just been round, started WD-40 in bits. Unfortunately, we have got locking wheel nuts. And we see this time and time again, guys. And it's basically, if somebody has an accident in their car, it'll go to the insurance company or it'll go to a breakdown yard, it'll go to recovery. And they say, right, it's a write-off. A lot of the insurance assessors do it over photos now. Now, they would have ripped that off over a photo. They would have seen it and said, yep, cat S. So the owner then turns up and gets all of their personal belongings. They're in a bit of a rush. They haven't got all day there. So they literally chuck everything in a bag, including the locking wheel nut key. So Chris is going to concentrate on getting those lockers off. And I'm going to pop round Kent Auto Salvage and actually get us a rear axle for it. Um, I think we already chose the quarter panel, rear bumper and a rear light. So that's the plan for today. We would like to get the axle fitted and get this on its wheels. But I did make a call just before I did buy that quarter panel. Uh, sorry, price up that quarter panel at Mark's. We actually spoke to Ford's, Chris, didn't we? And I spoke to both Ford's. And how much was that quarter? I still think it's wrong. No, I rung a note. I rung... I can't remember what, £740 plus VAT. That is Ferrari money, yeah. So we are going to be probably rolling with a second-hand one. So anyway, enough waffle. I'll get round Kent Autos and Chris can crack on. Get this done. This is how helpful they are, guys. Look, taking the axle off for me. I ain't even had to get dirty. Little bit of dust on my hands. So the only tension really on the back axle is the springs. So we've just dropped the shock bolts out. You can see it's half wound out there. Removed the springs off. We was gonna remove it out of, pull these pins and leave the brackets on there both sides because the bolt, where it's so bent there, it's actually making it really difficult to get to that back bolt. So this side, we are gonna pull out and actually leave the bracket on there and then remove the bracket after. With putting a new one on, it's going to be quite straightforward because nothing's bent. But fortunately, out of all the brake pipes, ABS, everything like that, we have only got that one broken pipe there, which when I went to undo it, you can see it's bent anyway. Let's pull it down a little bit so you can see it. That's bent anyway. So as soon as I went to undo it, it snapped off. So that's everything removed. We're going to lower it down on the floor, Chris, aren't we? Yeah. Pull them pins out and then lift the car back up in the air and hopefully leave the axle on the floor. Well, in theory, that's exactly what should happen. Let's do it. So quite a bit of work there getting it off because it was so bent up. You can see the actual mounting bracket there is mangled and we couldn't get to that bolt. So what we was actually trying to do was pull this bolt out, but on the car, that was actually hitting the fuel tank, which wouldn't allow us to get that out. So. That is why it took us so long to do it. The other side, we pulled the bolt and pulled it out just like that. But look at the state of that now. It's off, guys. 
we did do it the other way round. Unfortunately, we didn't get round to doing the locking wheel nuts. They're going to be a bit of a nightmare. They've got the security ring on them. So we just thought we'd concentrate on doing the actual axle itself. And then we'd come back to that in a little while. I did manage to borrow one spare wheel off of Mark while I was down there off of that KA. So we're all right for getting this one then sent off for refurbish. But we got very, very lucky with this one because it looks like there's just a little bit of damage there on the edge. And of course, that little dent on the outside. So we can send that one off and get it refurbished. In the meantime, we can just run it on that one now. So, so far, so good. I also took out the arch liner. And as you can see, we got quite lucky in there as well. It hasn't touched the inner. It's all still in shape. Sorry, the camera's quite blurry. I can see it's dirty. I'll wipe that in a sec. So the outer quarter panel is going to need changing, but the inside all seems fine. We've got a little bit of a bend now. That's going to knock round fine and a little bit of separation there. But like I say, all that's got to come off anyway. So we've got the new one down there on the floor, ready to go. Obviously bracket for the driver's side. And we're just going to sling that one into the bracket on the passenger side. So we'll crack straight on, get that on there and hopefully get it on its wheels. Moving along there, guys. Didn't want to time-lapse any more of it. As you can see, both back wheels are on. Chris has just removed the brake pipe that was broken. Now, it actually starts over this side, comes in, goes all the way along, and then comes down and comes right down the inside of this chassis leg here. You can see the two fuel pipes. Um, the pipe is. Yeah, that's, that's fine, yeah. Um, there's one brake pipe left in there, so we're going to have to get the other one on the bench and make a new one up for it. But so far, so good. What well, we got handbrake cables to do, Chris? That yeah. pipe, and that's pretty much it, isn't it? That's it. So getting there very, very slowly. I'm sure we get it done. It's on its wheels, guys. Last little bit to do. These handbrake cables. I just thought I'd show this. They push through these holes exactly the same on the Fiat 500. And then you stick, it's going to be quite awkward to actually do it one-handed. I don't know why I said I'd show it. But you basically, you stick one through, do exactly the same the other side. That bolt goes through and it has a 10 mil on the back of it. Very, very simple, but works perfect. And some money Chris forgot there. Well, he obviously didn't spot. Let's get them on and uh, get it off the ramp. That actually shows it a bit better. So you can't even put this bracket on around the wrong way. Can you see there's obviously a slot in that side and there's not that side. So if you went to put it the wrong way, your cable would be coming out the side here. Then you just stick that pin through. All done. We won't adjust that right up yet because we're just about to make up a brake pipe for it and get the, all of the brakes bled up first. So we'll get on with that and then we'll finish tight, tightening that up, get it about right and stick that centre console back on. But again, that just slides in one little 10 mil. Very, very simple car to work Guys, on. quite a bit of work there. Chris had to make up a new pipe. I had to run down, get a roll of pipe. So you can see the original one. It's like a, that's metal, Chris, isn't it? The originals on these. That's why they go a bit corroded and you can never get them undone. So you can see the new one there, copper, all the way down in all of its original clips. Then it goes up here and from here, it travels all the way along. And you can see it up there behind that fuel tank. Then you get all the way along here and it goes round. You have to put that angle on it and it clips up there. We have got a broken clip on the handbrake holder. Even though it holds there and it holds further back, that one will need tacking on. So we can do that at a later date. But for now, 
for the best part, we can get it down and actually start bleeding up the brakes, then this car should start run and drive. But that brake pipe took quite a while to make because it is quite awkward. So it's like four foot across there. Then you've got that bend in it. Then it's got another bend in it there. And then three foot up this end. And then, of course, all the way down and round. So it's not expensive stuff, but we was just talking. I don't really like making brake pipes, neither does Chris. That was 7.6 metres. It was £13 for that. And obviously, Chris has got the, the brake tool for putting the ends back on and a pipe cutter there to cut it short. But we've got that done. So let's get the easy bleed out and bleed it up. So we're ready to bleed the brakes. Last time we did a video on bleeding the brakes with the easy bleed, a lot of you found this really interesting. So I will stick a link for an easy bleed. It probably won't be this one because it is quite old, but they're all pretty much the same. I will stick a link for one of these in the description. So... It comes with all different size caps in there, really to suit your vehicle. Most of them do have the same size now, so quite universal. So we're going to start by topping this bottle all the way up, and then we're going to top up the uh, Easy Bleed bottle. And I'll try and, really, two of us can't do it. We've got a jar as well and a pipe. And Chris, are the fronts connected to the rears? They're not, are they? No, it's got so, so we'll only have to bleed up the rears. We'll double check them anyway, won't we? Um, it depends, doesn't it? Have we lost all the fluid? No. No, we haven't lost all the fluid. Probably about half of it. Oh, no, we should be all right. We should be okay. So, the rule of thumb is as well, you start with the furthest wheel away from your reservoir. So our reservoir is on the passenger side at the front. So we're going to start on the driver's side on the rear. So... We get all set up, get cracking, and then I'll cut in and we can actually watch Chris do that and I'll show you a bit more of the easy bleed. Just before we put the ramp up, I'm not going to be able to show too much of this because the ramp's going to be up in the air. Of course, I'm not going to reach it. So we've just checked the tyre pressure. It's actually got 22 PSI in it and it's kind of a maximum of 20 PSI. So Chris did squirt a little bit out of that. Maximum 20 PSI to go in this bottle. So you just simply connect it to your valve on your tyre. And then it's got a pipe obviously coming out of the bottle, going down to your tank. So the tank's full up. We've got the bottle half full there. And then as soon as we get it up in the air, I can show you the process. Hopefully you get to see some of this, guys, because I am holding a, a torch in one hand and the camera in the Yeah, look at all that air coming out there, guys. See all them bubbles? And that's, that whole pipe's completely empty. So it's full of air. It's a new pipe. There's still quite a lot to come out of that, Chris, right? I don't know. We'll see, won't we? That's basically the gist of it, guys. And as soon as the bubbles stop and all the air's out of the system, Chris will turn the spanner clockwise, lock off the bleed nipple, and that side should be good. We'll move on to the other side. Yep, now on to the passenger side. There's a lot in that one. Seven mil bleed nipples. They're small, aren't they? Yeah. Never seen one that small. There's not a lot in that one because that one pipe runs to both. No, it doesn't, no, does no, it? They're individual, they're individual yeah. yeah. So there shouldn't be a lot in this one anyway. But we clamped, clamped it off. We here. did, yeah. On the. Flexi. Yeah, so looks all good. Yeah. So nice to see it just after changing that back axle. Now back on its wheels, and I've just driven it out of the workshop in a nice straight line, which is perfectly what we wanted. So we've got to get that wheel refurbished, and then I suppose start on the repairs. We need to get that quarter panel sorted for it. I've managed to get the back light when I got the back axle, and all of the bits for this car are really inexpensive, which is great because we want it to turn out as cheap as possible so that we can sell it as cheap as possible. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe over and then we'll have a little look at where that wheel's sitting and make sure we're happy with it. Is 
just giving it a quick run up the yard, just clean any crud off the brakes and just obviously make sure that it's going in the right direction, but seems to be fine. It actually come up quite nice as well, the wash. Got quite a lot of little stone chips on it, but we'll see what we get done when it goes to the paint shop. I think we're quite a way off that yet. Pretty little car, I think. What's it like? Drives in a straight line? Perfect. Perfect. Is it? Lovely. Let's have a little quick look at it. Uh, here, Chris. It's quite a nice colour in this sunshine. And that wheel sitting. I've just heard that cut in. It's working. I could hear it. Turn it off again. Yeah, do you hear it? Brings the revs down. But that wheel sitting exactly where it needs to be. Reasonably quick video on this little car today, guys. And as you can see, got a bit of a queue going on there for the uh, paint shop, the little Peugeot. We got little bits of that film ready to go in the next video, but you can pretty much get a gist of it in this video. It's pretty much ready to go. Me and Chris have had a bit of a chat. Got some, got some nice projects on the way and got a lot of nice content on the way. But we are at a bit of a stumbling block, aren't we, on this Toyota Hilux. So... We kind of we don't really know where to go with it. We can't we can't locate a bed for it, but in the same sense, it's so much welding to repair the one that's on there, and we just we're um sorry. Did see this is Chris's like he went mate just get rid of it. But I said last time we sold a project halfway through, it it does I know some people like to follow it, but we don't know where we're going with that at the moment. But eventually in the next few videos we will let you know. Sorry. <laughs> it's for sale he says but we'd it is a shame i'd like to finish it a lot of people were saying put a tray back on it we don't want to get involved in doing that it's a bit of work and really we would have liked to have put a bed on it a lot of you sent out saying rob is one is one is one and it just turned out that none of them happened to be the right one so enough about the Ilux. we will get back to that at a later date hope you did enjoy the little video on the ka like i said we have got some cracking content on its way for you guys so if you haven't already hit that subscribe button turn on the notification bell check out the merchandise the link is in the description and why not follow us on instagram for some little sneak peeks at selvage rebuilds don't forget please like subscribe and share and we'll see you later on in the next one